गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट क्लास इन फिजिक्स इन योर क्लास ट्वेल्व सो सिंस वी आर स्टार्टिंग इट ऑनलाइन यू नो ड्यू टू दिस लॉकडाउन द क्लासेस ऑफलाइन क्लासेस आर नॉट बीइंग हेल्ड सो दिस इज द ऑनलाइन क्लास एंड आई जस्ट टेल यू आई एम स्टार्टिंग विथ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर but before i start i once again remind you our textbook our textbook is ncrt part 1 and 2 basically we will follow we shall follow this book part 1 and part 2 and now at present i am starting with the part 1 and in part 1 here our first chapter which we are going to start that is electrostatics electrostatics is our first chapter so obviously it is an introductory class to electrostatics try to understand whatever problem is there you can ask also here and we will also upload the time to time the <coughs> assignments of this chapter and the other chapters also first we shall upload the assignments of this chapter but first i start it today now first of all when we are talking about electrostatics what is electrostatics electrostatics this chapter deals with the charges at rest look this chapter deals with the charges at rest that means we shall discuss the property of the charges when it is at rest okay now we are starting this chapter with a topic that is called frictional electricity look at this it's called frictional electricity what is frictional electricity electricity or the charge which is developed due to the friction due to the rubbing of the two substances very common phenomenon if a plastic cone is rubbed with the dry hair you know friction will be there dry hair then the plastic cone starts attracting papers small pieces of papers we say that plastic cone has become charged similarly i give an example suppose if you know a glass rod see if a glass rod is rubbed with the silk cloth my dear students i will suggest you to note it down also the things which i am giving because it will be complete notes i will give you proper time also i hope if you will be vigilant then you can note it down also so please note it down the necessary things if a glass rod is rubbed with silk cloth it is observed that the glass rod becomes positively charged and the silk cloth becomes negatively charged it is observed then what is actually charge charge is what from this description from this description which i have said from this what what is a charge what we can say about the charge what is it charge means charge means it is the charge means the deficit or surplus it is deficit or surplus of electrons by this electrons because it's microscopic point of view if i consider any substance is made up of the atoms you all know you can visualize the atom is the smallest unit of the matter and in the atom there is the nucleus protons are inside the nucleus they cannot come out electrons are in the outer orbits and outermost orbit is very much loosely held 
we shall discuss also about it. Due to which, what happens? If it is rough, friction happens, occurs, then the from atoms of the glass rod, electrons are transferred to silk cloth. This is why in glass rod, there is the deficit of electrons and in silk cloth, there is the surplus of electrons. In glass rod, deficit of electrons and in the silk cloth, surplus of electrons. Deficit of electrons due to which glass rod is positively charged and due to the surplus of electrons, the silk cloth is negatively charged. So, now what we can say about this charge? We can say actually the charge is the intrinsic property of the elementary particles. You can note down. Charge is the intrinsic property of the it is the intrinsic property of the elementary part of elementary particles due to which the bodies between the two bodies between the bodies there is an electrical force this force may be um, attractive force or repulsive force it may be attractive or repulsive so it is the due to the charge only the bodies behave in such a way that in between the two bodies there is always a force of attraction or repulsion so that is the so charge is the intrinsic property of the elementary particle of a particular body which gives rise to the electrical force between the bodies the two bodies okay this is about the charge that means ultimately what we have what we have what idea we have got the charge is mainly due to the surplus or deficit of electrons number one and second due to the charge only the two bodies in between the two bodies a force an attractive force or a repulsive force may occur now we shall at a glance just we discuss here let us now discuss some important properties of charges important properties let us see some important properties properties of charge what are the important properties of charge number one first point that is first is called the this is called the additivity of charges additivity of charges what does it mean it means as we know that charge is a scalar quantity from class 11 our knowledge of class 11 we know that the charge is a scalar quantity so if a number of charges are there the total charge of the system is always be the addition right addition of all the charges or you can say algebraic sum of all the charges i mean to say suppose there is a system let us say there is a system it is consisting of plus q1 here it is minus q2 here it is q3 here it is q4 like this plus plus like this once you see there is a system it is consisting of a number of the charges okay these are we can say point charges i will talk about the point charges later on what is the meaning of the point charge but let us suppose plus q1 minus q2 plus q3 plus q4 these are the point charges of a system then the total charge of the system should be equal to q1 plus minus q2 plus q3 plus q4 that means q1 minus q2 plus q3 plus q4 what do you understood it's very clear that they will be added and this is the algebraic sum we consider we say that is with the proper consideration of the signs we have considered the signs also secondly number two that is called conservation of charge conservation this is called conservation of charge what is the conservation of charge conservation of charge or the principle of conservation of charge it states that what does the principle of conservation of charge states it states that in a particular system 
in a particular system but that system must be you know it must be an isolated system if there is an isolated system what is an isolated system which is free from any external surroundings it is external the surroundings it is free from the effect of the surroundings for example just now i have told you one example you remember the glass rod and the cell block i repeat this whole thing this two together is a system a number of the bodies will make a system this these are this is forming a system it's a glass rod and this is the cell block okay what happens initially both are neutral total charge is zero neutral means what what is the total amount of the charge in this means amount of the positive charge is equal to the amount of the negative charge this is the meaning of the neutral body neutral body glass rod is neutral cell block is neutral after rubbing what happens electron transfer from glass rod to cell block by whatever amount the glass rod is becoming positively charged by the same amount the cell block is becoming negatively charged but the total charge of the system remains the same i hope you got the total charge of the system is remaining the same this we are absolutely that is called conservation the this system the total charge of this system is remaining conserved this is the conservation of charge but again i tell you it must be an isolated system there should not be any effect of the surrounding on this system <laughs> and the one more property that is the third property third property we can say i think all of you are noting down also the third property which is there that is called that is called quantization look it is called quantization of charge quantize what is the quantization of charge according to the quantization of charge any charge is expressed you can write any charge is expressed as the integral multiple any charge is expressed as the integral multiple of the electronic charge electronic charge the charge of an electron it is mathematically it is written like this q is equal to plus minus n e we write it like this q is equal to plus minus n e what is n n is here 1 2 3 4 and so on any integer any integer and e is what e it is a very fundamental charge that is the charge of the electron or the charge of a proton it is e is equal to e is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb obviously for electron it should be it should be if i consider the case of the electron it should be this value for the electron electronic charge it should be the integral multiple means it should be equal to the integral multiple of the electronic charge why it is so why it is considered like this a concept is just now i have told you here is the figure the electron is transferred whenever what is the cause of the quantization because whenever i have just given you a simple example rubbing process in case of a rubbing this process what happens electrons are transferred one electron two electron three electron accordingly 1e 2e 3e like this so always the charge by whatever amount it is negatively charged or by whatever amount it is positively charged that is what always by the integral multiple so my dear children these three are very important points very important properties of charges obviously you know normally basically charges are of the two types positive charge and negative charge that is there one more thing i can tell you due to the motion of the charge its magnitude of the charges due to the motion of the charged particle i repeat due to the motion of the charged particle the magnitude of this charge of this particle is not affected i hope you got
its magnitude will remain the same. Okay? And a static charge, the charge which is at rest, okay, that always produces electric field, which we shall discuss in our further classes. A static charge, the charge is at, which is at rest, that will always give rise to, it will always give rise to the electric field. Right? Whether the charge in motion, it will produce electric as well as the magnetic field, both. Anyway, those things will be discussed later on. But these are some salient features. These are some important features of the charge. And you know, the SI unit of charge, since our this classes was mainly about the charge, SI unit of charge is Coulomb. It is Coulomb capital C. It is after the name of the scientist. The Coulomb's law is after the name of the scientist, right? So the sorry, the SI unit Coulomb is after the name of the scientist. And in our next class, in, our, in my next lecture, we shall discuss, uh, discuss about the law which is called Coulomb's law. Our next discussion will be a very important law that is called Coulomb's law. It's also an important law. So we shall discuss regarding Coulomb's law also in the next class. That's a very important law. You will see that Coulomb's law is very much identical with the Newton's law of gravitation. In mathematical form it is. But definitely there, there are so many many differences between the uh, Newton's law of gravitation and Coulomb's law. But at a glance you may feel that this law, Coulomb's law, which will be very much identical with the Newton's law of gravitation. So in our next class, we shall discuss regarding Coulomb's law. Okay.